Welcome back, everyone. This is a most exciting of days. We're recording this on February 10th, 2023, and we are opening even more doors of the universe today than we've opened before, because each new episode is another door we've opened. So, welcome to this episode. It's been a couple weeks. I am staying on track with recording on a regular basis. Um, but yeah, we just finished up the UFO, UAP, and the U.S. government series, combining the two, how they are interacting with each other. Um, if you didn't get a chance to listen to it, I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it's a new... We're all done with that. We're on to do, and I want to say better things, because that's normally what you say in this situation, but equally good things today. So we've got that going for us. Um, Trying to think if there is anything new or exciting. We had the uh, Chinese spy balloon. That was, uh, that was fun. That was a new one. We kind of shot down and just like, not today, China. Um... There's uh some there's war and rumors of war. Let's let's be honest. Things are going on in Europe that are somewhat starting to connect with us over here. We are aware of what's happening and we are supplying certain people with certain items that is making other certain people not the happiest with us. Um but either way, let's let's get away from that. Let's get away from that. Let's talk. This is that's too much. It's been a, it's been a mental health check-in week. This is my, um, I think third week. I've been switched over to daytime shifts, um, and everyone has been <laughs> super bummed out lately. Don't know what the deal is there, um, and they all appreciate my positive energy. So I. I've spent all of my positive energy in this 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 bubble of of negativity that is surrounding me with big changes happening um lots of changes happening at work and people are people are feeling it um I think I'm finally feeling it uh I think I'm more one of those people like in the moment I'm like ah Let's do this. Let's stay positive. Let's get this going. Let's get this going. Let's just keep keep things rolling. Um, roll with the punches. Um, and then at the end of the week, I don't realize how many times I've been punched. And it gets to a point where I need to actually do what my doctor tells me and get a hold of the behavioral health section of the hospital I go to, uh, where my main physician is, my primary care physician is. Um, so today I called and I made a, uh, appointment, a phone appointment, because let's be honest, as someone that is antisocial, struggles with making phone calls, struggles with setting up appointments, um, in person isn't always the easiest, and it seems like it's a lot easier to want to flake on that. There was a video phone option too, and I was like, you know, what, let's just let's just have this initial initial meeting be a phone one. I was given the option for all three, and I was like, yeah, let's just do phone. So that's set up. Your boy is out there trying to get his his mental health in order, um, which I have a very supportive girlfriend um and we are in our own little therapy together with someone um which has been very helpful bringing up a lot of stuff that I don't know how to deal with in relationships because most of my past relationships were drunk I was drunk the entire relationship I uh which is we're getting personal now I'm bringing it in here I'm bringing it home to you Getting sober and trying to move a relationship sober, it's a, it's a whole different ball game. Um, 
actually caring, actually trying to make it work instead of just belling every time the relationship gets tough. And I know I have, I've definitely been guilty of that in the past. Um, but yeah, we're here today in this moment. Life is good. It's a day off. Um, I had a fun interaction with our landlords this morning oh, via text. My very supportive girlfriend also gave me the, it's a husband and wife that are our landlords and gave me the husband and wife's numbers, but the wife's number was, I'm, I'm going to share this with you because it is, it actually was, <laughs> it had me sitting there like, do I really want these people to be my landlords? Um, I had messaged about, well, we locked ourselves out of the house today. That was the first time. And it's, we've been in, I've been here in Portland for one year now. So this is, that's pretty good. Only locking yourself out one time. And so I messaged them regarding that. And our washer has been on the fritz the past week or so. Either way, so I messaged them. And the numbers I text are his number. And... What I thought was the wife's number, and I just text them, letting them know about those two issues, and then I sent an update and said, hey, we got back in the house, which, thank you, Des Moines, Iowa Public Library, because your library card has taken me many places, including into my own house, because I used it to jimmy the lock today, and we got into the house. Um... Because I'd only locked the bottom, not the deadbolt. Which saved us $100 from calling a locksmith. Keep at it. It took us about a half hour, 45 minutes before I finally got the lock jimmied. So, don't call don't call the locksmith unless you absolutely have to. Either way, so we called. <laughs> I text them and let them know, hey, we got in the house. Where? And then, what I thought was the wife's number... Text back, it said, glad it worked out. We will be raising the rent to offset the cost incurred due your incompetence. So, talking to girlfriend, she's like, are you on good terms with her? Like, where this would be a normal conversation? Like, she feels comfortable enough saying that to you? I was like, I just got your number off. I just got her number off you today. Like, I, no, we've never conversed via text or anything else where, so I was, if we're like, oh, well, sh she must be joking. That, that's, uh, I mean, that's a little weird way to joke or whatever. And I said, jokingly, bag, understandable. It's been one of those weeks. And then, oh, I told him we were going on a coffee date too. We went to go have coffee and do some, some workbook stuff through therapy, but, um, and then their, their response was, hopefully the coffee woke you up to smell the sunshine. <laughs> and, and, and the husband is not responding at all in this. Um, as far as, <laughs> which I, I called and his phone was off. So he has an excuse as to why there was no like, uh, I think you got the wrong number or something. Because it should have shown up as a random number. Because it's not his wife's phone number. But either way, yeah. So I had this whole... We had this... Uh, it's one of those things where you just look at life and you're like... Did I really need to get that stressed out about that? And at the time, I, we're both like... Do we really want to live with landlords that are talking to us like this? Um, the answer was no. And we are actually already in the process of looking for somewhere else to move somewhere a little bigger a little more space for us um we have a nice little adu we live in um but we think the time has come for something bigger and better either way so yeah i i was <laughs> about every 15 minutes i'd be like i'm still thinking about that text we were talking and i was having a hard time concentrating because in the back of my mind i'm just processing all the well, how soon do we have to move out? Have we got somewhere we can go? Is there going to be somewhere we can stay in the interim? And like, she's talking about having us like move to an Airbnb. That's a month to month thing. And just having our stuff in storage till we find something. 
Either way, it worked out where that wasn't our actual landlord talking to us like that, and we got duped. And the worst part is, I text Craig earlier today, because I thought I had his number, but I ended up texting my friend Craig from Iowa, <laughs> and I said, I explained the situation, how we were locked out of the house, and they responded, I don't have a key. And I said, okay, do you know if our landlord's wife's name has a key? Or if not, we can just call a locksmith. Oh, did he say, I think I deleted the message. And then he responded that, but he still didn't say anything. Like, he didn't say, I think you've got the wrong number. Or, <laughs> it's been a day with text. It's been a confusing day that I was already in a low mental health spot. I was in a, I'm in a bit of a funk. I'm feeling better now. I don't it's maybe the walk to the coffee shop and the walk to our walk today, maybe just talking about it, just being able to process everything a little more and not having this overwhelming thought in the back of my head. Does our landlord really feel comfortable talking to us like that? That all said, we are, what are we at here? It doesn't even say what we're at. I don't know how many minutes in. Or we're, we're 11 minutes in here. That all said, focus on today. Focus on right now because things are good. And usually the thing, either the, the best thing I learned in recovery was, um, I believe somebody... And the group said it. It said, this too shall pass. It's a, it's a good, it's a good way to remember. And it's not only talking about, about the bad times. Um, just remember everything comes and goes. Everything in this life is temporary. It's not going to last. You may have to, you may have to do some in and out press for a couple of minutes you might have to uh, do some in and out press for a couple of years. But enjoy the good times because they're going to pass. And don't worry about the bad times because they're going to pass. It's just kind of this, this two shall pass works for more. If I was somebody that was into getting quotes tattooed on me. Which I'm, for the most part, I'm not. I've got script across here, but I don't think I have any other writings on my, any other wording on my body. Um, but yeah, this too shall pass is, uh, is our lesson for today. Our lesson to keep us in this moment, enjoying the good times and not focusing on the bad times. So there you go. You got a, you're going to get a, a fun podcast about cryptids and you're going to get a fun inspirational start to your, uh, an inspirational quote for your day. Who am I? What is life? Where would I have been 20 to five years ago? I wouldn't have been talking like, yeah, maybe five years. It's been six years sober. Seven years ago, eight years ago, this is not how you would have found me. You would have found me not <laughs> letting things go. So now that we've gotten through that, you're all like, who is that lady that you have posted on your Instagram with the love song by Rod Stewart? And she's wearing this... This black shirt with hearts on it, and it says in my heart. So obviously, I did Rod Stewart. You'll be in my heart as the music. It's not a love song to this person, per se. It is, in fact, the first major, I guess, uh, the first person that reported seeing what we're talking about today, which I don't know if it's true. I've looked around and it looks like there are older, um, accounts of it happening, 
but this was this was kind of the first she was she was the one that did the first like major kind of put it on the put them on blast you know just kind of put them out there and that actually got them some recognition who are they what am i talking about well sit back and prepare to have your mind blown as i tell you everything you'll ever need to know about el chupacabra Yeah, we are we're going to we're going to do a dive into our buddy El Chupacabra. Um you may have heard about the Chupacabra um or Chupacabras. It's somebody said it was on par like it took third place among cryptids as far as notoriety or being known or well known um i would i would disagree i would say i would put the chupacabra right there with the mothman you've obviously got the loch ness monster i knew about the loch ness loch ness (laughs) i knew about the loch ness monster since like elementary school then later maybe middle school or high school I learned about Sasquatch or Bigfoot. And then you had the other two. And that's why I said, I feel like if you're looking at a list of popular cryptids, um, Chupacabra or Mothman are going to be next in line as far as well-known notoriety. I did. We went all over the place. There was articles from National Geographic, Encyclopedia Britannica, Princeton? Yeah, the Princeton one's weird. I don't know what's going on with that one. I feel like that one might be... Make sure you got your uh, your uh, antivirus set to on. Um, yeah, it looks like it was a, a uh, web page made in the mid-90s. Which I think it actually was because I think some of the articles were talking like some of the... I think a person had written... Most of the articles in there, like the person that made the page, um, we're talking like last year, this happened this year. And like, that was 95 when the first big thing happened. So what is the Chupacabra? Chupacabras, the name, um, is literally, 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 the name is literally translated as goat sucker. From chupar to suck and cabras to goats. It is both, it is known as both chupacabras and chupacabra throughout the Americas, with the former being the original name and the latter a regularization. Um, the name is attributed to Puerto Rican comedian Silverio Perez, who coined the name in 1995 while commenting on the attacks as a San Juan radio DJ. Um, And UFO investigator Jorge Martin wanted to to be called, I believe it's Ibaz, Ibaz, or I think Ibaz. I go Ibanez, Ibanez gets guitars. Uh, I-B-A-Z, which is a Spanish acronym meaning Alien Biological Entity. So, all right, so appearance. This is something that, again, like I say every time, like I have this over, overlying view of what the chupacabra is. I have a, I have, when I do a topic, I have an overlying thought, hey, this is what it is. This is, I know the, the top level stuff. So the chupacabra has two variations. Um, the original variation um, is that it's a reptile-like creature said to have leathery or scaly greenish-gray skin and sharp spines or quills running down its back all the way to the end of its tail. It is said to be approximately three to four feet high and stands and hops in a fashion similar to that of a kangaroo. 
So that was the first one. It looks like kind of like this uh, alien looking um, reptile. It had large ovular red eyes. It was either all red or all black. Usually red was, from what I was reading, was the more common one. Um, so, and although the bike pedal creature generally ambles on two legs, it's been known to run on all four. Many assert kangaroo-like qualities, saying that the chupacabra uses its strong hind legs to jump rather than walk. Others suggest a more ape-like quality to the creature's gait. The other description of it um, is a strange breed of wild dog. Um, this form is mostly hairless and has a pronounced spinal ridge, usually pronounced eye sockets, fangs, and claws. Unlike conventional predators, the chupacabra is said to drain all the animal's blood and sometimes organs, usually through three holes in the shape of downward pointing the shape of downwards pointing triangle, but sometimes through only one or two holes. Um, and that's like, that's the thing. It's, there's these two completely different animals that are two completely different creatures, um, that are being reported as chupacabras. Um, one looks like a lizard and one looks like a dog. One is on two legs one is runs on all four they did say though the the dog version does have what appears to be like longer kangaroo-ish legs to give it more of a, a jump a push the back legs are usually longer than the front legs um but yeah it's just it's it's odd to me that we have this these initial reports of this lizard-like creature and then Somewhere along the way, when it, I think it's more so when it gets to the America, to North America, or not North America, yeah, because it starts in Central America. I guess in North America, it's more of a dog creature that everyone is calling the chupacabra. I feel like these are two different creatures, but cryptids, if you will. Um, but yeah, let's let's get a little more into this. Report incidents of these sorts of creatures vary somewhat, but there are several basic characteristics that pop over that pop up over and over again. In most cases, the eyewitnesses describe a beast that is forward four and a half to five and a half feet tall with an oval shaped head bearing alien like eyes that glow red. Most descriptions claim that the creature has long, feathery spine that runs from the back of its head down the spine, ending at the rump. See, it's just... Yeah, no, that's... We'll talk about things later. Um, many eyewitnesses report a strong, unpleasant sulfur-type odor, but others say that the creature has no smell. Some say the skin is similar to a frog's green in color with mottled specks. Others claim it has the appearance of furry lizard with skelly skin. Okay. So yeah, we've got these two different descriptions of what this creature is. Um, I know one thing I'd heard is another description does list it with having bat-like wings and that was more in the lizard version of it that so it's just <laughs> most of the cryptids i've gone over so far have a general set standard of hey this is what this cryptid looks like this is what it is and i just yeah i feel like this should be listed as two different cryptids but that's just me we'll keep going with what i know so with that said, in those two descriptions, um, let's see here. Who is talking to us? Texas A&M Wildlife Specialist John Tomasek, T-O-M-E-C-E-K. Um, what looks like a terrifying beast of legend is actually a pretty sad sight to see. Most of the time when folks report a chupacabra, it's actually a coyote with very advanced stage mange. They've almost lost all their hair, except for the little bit between their shoulder blades, that's, which sticks up. Their skin is gray and scaly and looks quite gaunt. 
you look in Latin American folklore, and it's an idea that's been around a long time. But until someone in the 20th century, you didn't have a real concrete image of what this animal was. You had a, you had, you had kind of vague descriptions. It's not actually dissimilar to the vampire in Slavic culture, where there isn't a concrete description of what it is until Bram Stoker writes his book and everyone says, ah, that's what it looks like. The current physical description, if you will, kind of the basic concept of what these looks like, shows up in Puerto Rico in the 1920s, John said. It originates there as best we can tell. Okay. So, our descriptions come from 1920s Puerto Rico. So, on to the history of El Chupacabra. In 1975, a series of livestock killings in the small town of Moca, Puerto Rico, were attributed to El Vampiro de Moca, the vampire of Moca. I don't know if you can tell, I'm actually a quarter Mexican, so my enunciation of the of the Spanish language should... I took four years, my grandma spoke it. My grandma didn't really speak a lot. She spoke it enough, like, small phrases and stuff that I would pick up like there's definitely some connect there but yeah hopefully you can hopefully i am pronouncing these words correctly like i said it's been almost oh my gosh almost it's been a while since i've taken spanish and spoken it on a regular basis um but we'll keep going with it and bear with me i know if you're a native speaker i probably sound terrible saying these Initially, it was suspected that the killings were committed by a satanic cult. Later, more killings were reported around the island, and many farms reported loss of animal life. Each of the animals was reported to have had its body bled dry through a series of small circular incisions. The first reported attack, eventually attributed to the actual chupacabras, occurred in March of 1995. Eight sheep were discovered dead in Puerto Rico, each with three puncture wounds in the chest area and reportedly completely drained of blood. A few months later in August, an eyewitness named Madeline Tolentino reported seeing the creature in the Puerto Rican town of Canovanas, where as many as 150 farm animals and pets were reportedly killed. Madeline Tolentino. Madeline Tolentino is who is the lovely lady that is pictured on the Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. So if you're wondering who that is, that is our first eyewitness of El Chupacabra. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Shortly after the first reported incidents in Puerto Rico, other animal deaths were reported in other countries such as Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, and the United States. Um, so yeah, let's, let's look at 1996. This is one year afterwards. The towns are it's 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 actually like they're taking they're actually taking precautions. Kids are walking home by themselves. Um I don't know. They've got a bunch of stuff in place to protect the people of the village because it is becoming there was like I can't remember what it was like a month. They had a bunch of deaths happening in the village. Animal deaths. The chupacabra has never been reported to attack humans, so, except in some television shows that are wildly incorrect. But in 1996, Mir Mayor, <laughs> Mayor Jose Ramon Kimosoto was up for a re-election, and he decided to take the matter into his own hands. He was there to protect the people and the animals of his town. And how do you protect the people of your town? With a safari. 
Um, in October 1995, he organized a safari with armed people and cops. Um, Soto was carrying a large crucifix and brought a goat in the cage with them. Um, and Soto was a man who loved interviews which is great for the press. He has interviews in the Washington Post, the New York Times, and our most credible source, the Weekly World News. Um, so yeah, that was... <laughs> Soto was out there doing his thing. Thank you, Jose Ramon Kimo Soto, for, for taking care, keeping the people protected in, in your town. I hope it won you a re-election. I actually didn't go that far to look to see if it actually won him. But yeah, they had, during that time, they had guards that were protecting the livestock because it was such, it was happening so often, and yeah, they needed protection. Um, So let's look here. So in October and December of 2018, there came many reports of suspected chupacabras in Manipur, India. Many domestic animals and poultry were killed in a suspicious manner similar to the chupacabra attacks, and several people reported that they had seen chupacabras. However, forensic experts' opinion that the street dogs were responsible for mass killing of domestic animals and poultry after studying the remnants of a corpse. I don't know. <laughs> were killed in a suspicious manner. Wouldn't they be, wouldn't all the street dogs be killing the same way prior to this, if that was the issue? Sus. Very sus. Um, in October of 2019, a video recorded by Mundo Ovni, Ovni, O-V-N-I, showed the results of a supposed attack on chickens in Seburu. That is a... That is a name, Saburo Kio, sector of Lars, Puerto Rico. By April of 1996, more than 2,000 animals associated with the Chupacabra death. All right, that's not normal. Reputed origins. So a five-year investigation by Benjamin Radford, documented in his 2011 book, Tracking the Chupacabra, Included that the description given by the original witness in Puerto Rico, Madeline Tolentino, was based on the creature's seal in the 1995 science fiction horror film Species. The alien creature still is nearly identical to Tolentino's Chupacabra eyewitness account, and she had seen the movie before her report. It was a creature that looked like the Chupacabra, with spines on its back and all. The resemblance to the Chupacabra was really impressive, Tolentino reported. Radford revealed that Tolentino believed that the creature believed that the creatures and events she saw in species were happening in reality in Puerto Rico at the time, and therefore concluded the most important Chupacabra description cannot be trusted. This, Radford believes, seriously undermines the credibility of the Chupacabra as a real animal. My only issue with this is I did extensive deep dive research and watch species just this week before making this episode. And I could see it, but I don't see it. Maybe the child uh, species, spider, the child alien thing. Um, but no, I don't, I don't see the resemblance to all the other descriptions. And there's nowhere in the movie where there's blood sucking. So that's another issue I have with that being the the final conclusion on that. So to me, no, the species does not it from all the descriptions I've read, it doesn't sound like um the alien creature in um I could see it. There's spikes on the back and but it's not really spikes, it's weird little I don't know. Either way, I don't see it there. Watch Species. Let me know. You can get it for free. I watched it for free with a Cinemax free trial on Amazon. Um, but yeah, it's on there right now. Either way, so our our 
our main witness, Madeline Tolentino, our first witness, um, saw species, and there's that connection. But I don't see it. So, in addition, the reports of blood sucking by the chupacabra were never confirmed by a necropsy. The only way to conclude that the animals were drained of blood, Dr. David Morales, a Puerto Rican veterinarian with the Department of Agriculture, analyzed 300 reported victims of the chupacabra and found that they had not been bled dry. But then I was watching another video where there was a person who had gone and was getting the... He was a... I think he was like an animal... What do you call it? Animal control type person. And said that they had been blood dry. Dr. David Morales, who's paying you? Am I right? No. Um, either way. So, they found that they had 300 reported victims, but... How many did I say were there in 96? More than 2,000 animals were associated with the chupacabra death and only... It's only checking 300 of them. Those numbers aren't good enough for me. I'm sorry, that's not even 50%. That's not even a failing grade. Get out of here with that. Radford divided the chupacabra reports into two categories. The reports from Puerto Rico and Latin American where animals were attacked and it is supposed their blood was extracted and the reports in the United States of... Mammals, mostly dogs and coyotes with mange that people called chupacabra due to their unusual appearance. In late October 2010, University of Michigan biologist Barry O'Connor concluded that all the chupacabra reports in the United States were simply coyotes infected with the parasite Cecroptis scabi, whose symptoms would explain most of the features of the chupacabra. They would be left with little fur, thickened skin, and a rank odor. O'Connor theorized that the attacks on goats occurred because these animals are greatly weakened, so they're going to have a hard time hunting. So they may be forced into attacking livestock because it's easier than running down a rabbit or deer. Although several witnesses came to the conclusion that the attacks could not be the work of dogs or coyotes because they had, been, had not eaten the victim, this conclusion is incorrect. Both dogs and coyotes can kill and not consume the prey, either because they are inexperienced or due to injury or difficulty in killing the prey. They pray, the prey can survive the attack and die afterwards from internal bleeding or circulatory shock. The presence of two holes in the neck corresponding with the canine teeth are to be expected since this is the only way that most land carnivores have to catch their prey. There are reports of stray Mexican hairless dogs being mistaken for chupacabras. Um, Lauren Coleman, director of the International Cryptozoology Museum in Portland, Maine, agreed that many chupacabra sightings, especially the more recent ones, could be explained away as appearances by Meiji coyotes, dogs, and coyote dog hybrids, or koi, koi dogs. It's certainly a good explanation, Coleman said, but it doesn't mean it explains the whole legend. For example, the more than 200 original Chupacabra reports from Puerto Rico in 1905 described a decidedly uncanine creature. In 1905, Chupacabras was understood to be a bipedal creature that was three feet, about a meter tall, and covered in short gray hair with spikes out of its back, Coleman said. But as if in a game of telephone, the description of the Chupacabra began to change in the late 1990s due to mistakes and mistranslations in news reports, he said. By 2000, the original chupacabra had been largely replaced by the new one, canine one. What was seen as a bipedal creature now stocks livestock on all fours. It was actually a big mistake, Colton said. Because of the whole confusion, with most of the media reporting chupacabras now as dogs or coyotes with mange, you really don't even hear any good reports from Puerto Rico or Brazil anymore like you did in the early days. Those reports have disappeared, and the reports of canines with mange have increased. Let's talk about the Chupacabra evolution. Cecroptes scabii? Scabi? Basically scabies. Also causes the itchy rash known as scabies in humans. In humans and non-human animals alike, the mite burrow under the skin of its host and secretes eggs and waste material, which trigger an inflammatory response from the immune system. In humans, scabies, the allergic rash in mites waste, is usually just a minor annoyance. But mange can be life-threatening for canines such as coyotes, which, have been, which haven't evolved especially effective reactions to sarcopathy's infection. 
The University of Michigan's O'Connor speculates that the mite pass from humans to domestic dogs and then on to coyotes, foxes, and wolves in the wild. His research suggests that the reason for the dramatically different responses is the human and the other primates have lived with the sarcopodes mite for much of their evolutionary history while other animals have not. Primates are the original hosts of the mite, O'Connor said. Our evolutionary history with the mite helps us to keep scabies in check so that it doesn't get out of hand like it does when it gets into other animals. In other words, humans have evolved to the point where our immune systems can neutralize the infection before the infection neutralizes us. The mites have been evolving, suggested the University of Georgia's Kiel. The parasite has had time to optimize its attack on humans so as not to kill us, which would eliminate our usefulness to the mites, he said. And on human animals, Sarcopides hasn't figured out the balance yet. In coyotes, for example, the reaction can be so severe that it causes hair to fall out and blood vessels to constrict, adding to a general fatigue and even exhaustion. Since chupacabras are likely mangy coyotes, this explains why the creatures are often reported attacking livestock. Animals with mange are often quite debilitated, O'Connell said, and if they're having a hard time catching their normal prey, they might choose livestock because it's easier. As for the blood second part of the chupacabra legend, that may just be make-believe or exaggeration. I think it's pure myth, O'Connor said. Um... There are a few um, other cryptics or legends that are related to the Chupacabra. There's the Ozark Howler, a large bear-like animal, is the subject of similar urban legend. In Arkansas folklore, the Howler is a legendary creature said to dwell in the Ozarks. According to the tradition, the creature is bear-like in shape with a gray-colored shaggy coat. In December 2015, the Arkansas television station 4029 News reported that it had received photographs reported to be images of the creature from a viewer. The station contacted the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, who responded they had heard of no claims of sightings of the creature and said that the images sent to the station were a hoax. Call records to the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission during the fall of 2014 include a reported sighting of an animal in Benton County, Arkansas. In October 2014, a recorded emergency call received by the AGFC indicates a motorist nearly collided with an unidentified mammal at 9.45 p.m. The record phone conversation indicates that the armed state wildlife officers may have been dispatched to investigate what reports describe as a beer-sized gray fast-running animal on Pump Station Road in Springdale. There's your Ozark Howler. 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 Ozark Howler. Uh, then we got the Puchins of Chile also share some similarities in their supposed habits, but instead of being dog-like, they're described as winged snakes. This legend may have originated from the vampire bat, an animal endemic to the region. In the Philippines, another legendary creature called the Sigbin shares many of the Chupacabra's descriptions. The Sigbin or... The Sigbin, or Sigbin, B-I-N or B-E-N, is a creature in Philippine mythology said to come out at night to suck the blood of victims from their shadows. It is said to walk backwards with its head lowered between its hind legs and to have the ability to become invisible to other creatures, especially humans. It resembles a hornless goat, but has very large ears, which it can clap like a pair of hands, and a long, flexible tail that can be used as a whip. The sigbin is said to emit a nauseating odor. It is believed to issue forth from its lair during Holy Week, looking for children that it will kill for their hearts, which it fashions into amulets. Well, that's nice. Uh, you got the grunches. It's a legend in New Orleans that gets its name from a lover's lane called Grunch Road between the Mississippi River and Gulf of Mexico. The road was said to be inhabited by creatures called grunches, similar in appearance to the chupacabra. The grunch shell chupacabra is said to haunt many areas in New Orleans and surrounding parishes, Lakeview, Matar, Metairie, Chamblay, Harvey, Terrytown, Slidell, Covetin, and Paradise. 
All these city residents have a grunge story or two to tell. They are said to live in the darkest parts of New Orleans City Park golf course and have been running in the tall grass and along the levees of Chalmette National Battlefield in the Paradis, Luling, and Butte, L.A. area. I Many say late at night you can see them running across Highway 90 looking for something or someone to eat. Um, in popular culture, the chupacabra is definitely a large part of pop culture, showing up in many shows, having songs written about it, um, having entire albums written about it. The debut album of Imani Coppola is titled Chupacabra. Uh, the myth of the chupacabra is mocked in the 2012 episode of the cartoon series South Park. Um, the Magic the Gathering. Now this is real. This is this is the good stuff. The Magic the Gathering set rivals Vixalan introduced a card named Ravenous Chupacabra, which I'll share some pictures on Instagram of and some alt art because who doesn't love alt art and who doesn't love buying a proxy? Either way, uh, the Chupacabra was included as one of several vinyl figurines in. Cryptozoic Entertainment's Cryptkins Blind Bucks toy line in 2018. A redesigned series of figurines, including an updated Chupacabra, was released in August of 2020. A Chupacabra attacks Dr. Venture in the Dia de los Dangerous episode of the Venture Brothers. Um, the search for a Chupacabra was featured in the 1997 The X-Files episode El Mundo Gira, which I did watch before this as well. That was another part of my research because who doesn't, I will look for any excuse to watch an X-Files episode. Um, but if you are familiar with Breaking Bad, you get to see Tuco Salamanca B. El Chupacabra, which is actually kind of interesting because it's it, it, it deals with not so much an actual Chupacabra per se as we have come to know it here, but as in a evil being that is on the land. But there's a mixture of aliens and fungus involved, which is very, very uh, coincidental running along with our current Last of Us series playing now on HBO, which is phenomenal if you're not watching it. Check it out. But yeah, go watch Tuco and uh, see him play El Chupacabra. Chupacabra was the title of the mid-season finale of season four of the supernatural drama television series Grimm in December 2014. Has anybody watched Grimm? I haven't watched Grimm. I want to watch Grimm. I want to check it out. I've been meaning to check it out. Is it good? Is it not good? Let me know. Um, Teen Titans Academy, a DC comic book, has a bat-like metahuman called Chupacabra, whose alter ego is Diego Perez, named in honor of George Perez, the artist that initially il illustrated the Teen Titans. A 1999 episode of Futurama, the best cartoon ever made, features a monster called El Chupanibre. Um, in season three of Workaholics, called To Kill It... Chupacabra, 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 that's hard, it's hard to say, B-R-A-J is at the end of Chupacabra, there's the J at the end of Chupacabra, Chupacabra, I don't know, Blake finds what he believes to be the deceased corpse of the Rancho Chupacabra in the pool, though it turns out to be the neighbor's dog, um, in Netflix series The Imperfects, another one, is that worth watching, have you watched, is it worth watching, I don't know, uh, the character of Juan Ruiz transforms into a chupacabra whenever anyone he cares about is in danger. Let's do a quick run through of what the possibility is as far as the chupacabra. What are the possibilities of what it could possibly be? One possibility, Coleman said, is that people imagine things after watching or hearing about an alien horror film that opened in Puerto Rico in the summer of 1995, Species. Um, if you look at the date when the movie Species opened in Puerto Rico, you will see that it overlaps with the first explosion of reports there, he said. Then compare the images of Natasha Hinstridge's creature character 
seal and you will see the unmistakable spikes out of the back those match the first and see the thing is like that creature is so like animatronic it, it looks very like uh i can't remember what it's called those tattoos where it looks like you're tattooing metal on someone like a robot arm like robot stuff either way that's what it reminds me of mech like a mech alien type situation um, another theory is that the Puerto Rican creatures were an escape troop of rhesus monkeys on the island, which often stand up on their hind legs. There's a population of rhesus monkeys being used in blood experiments in Puerto Rico at the time, and that troop could have got loose, Coleman said. I was under the impression they did get loose, but said they could have gotten loose. It could be something that simple, or it could be something much more interesting, because we know that new animals are being discovered all the time. All right, so that is the end of our episode on El Chupacabra. You know it all. You've heard it all. What are your thoughts? What do you think? Did you like it? you think it's anything new you learned there? Anything old you learned there? Um, what are my thoughts on the Chupacabra? I think that I like the reptile version of the Chupacabra better. Um, I know my girlfriend has said the dog version is very cute but i am i'm running off of the fact that i think reptiles are cooler and reptiles with spikes and reptiles that are three to four feet tall and that have really big fangs that they use to suck blood out of animals is pretty cool so i'm going with i like the and they have the legs of kangaroos so they can jump really far that scares me more than dog. I don't know why. Dogs don't scare me usually. Um, it takes a lot for a dog to be something that I'm uh, afraid of. And I'm not afraid of the chupacabra. He's never attacked a human before. Why should I be afraid of it? And what if there's more than one? And that that's what I don't... That's why I wish there was some, like, separation between the reptile version and the uh, dog version. Just because I feel like these are two different cryptids. The ones that the people are reporting... Because, sure, the the original eyewitness of it came out saying that it's seen species and had made that connection there. But there was plenty of other reports that happened that weren't that. And there was over 2,000 in 1996. I think there was like 2,000 animals associated with the chupacabra, with a ch death via chupacabra. So, yeah, that makes me... Um, because it seems like in the 2000s is when it starts switching over to more of the dog, the canine, the canid version of uh, the chupacabra. That's just my opinion. I feel like there's two different, and I am more more like to lean towards the other version because it seems like these other ones, most of what have been reported have been tested and have come back as... Um, come back as animals canids with mange it's even been reports of, <laughs> of uh raccoons um some people think it's aliens some people think it's a dinosaur some think it's a nasa engineered blood-sucking creature um to the point they kept bringing it up that nasa spokesperson brian welch had to publicly deny that theory some people think it's humanoid some people think it's robots some people think it's a military experiment some people think it's the devil himself um but either way no i my thought would be if we're going with the original that that is definitely more cryptid like than the canine version that kind of came up in the 2000s i am more of a call me call me a purist i like the original description better um and that is what i think of when i hear the chupacabra i think of cujo when i think of a killer dog that's that's what comes to my mind but and like i said it's never attacked a human so i mean it's not even i mean killer it's just it's hungry we all get hungry i get hungry you get hungry i don't need blood to like suffice myself i'm vegan there's no blood in my diet. But that's not the point. The point is, what do you think? Did you? What are your thoughts on El Chupacabra? Do you think it is a an alien life form? And in yeah, watch the watch the. Uh, it is it is a fun episode of the X Files. 
definitely an interesting twist around on it and everything, but it really has nothing to do with what we discussed here today, but still a good episode. And Tuco Salamanca. All right. So that is where we will end it up. As always, thank you for listening. Please check out my link tree. Uh, L I N K T R dot E backslash D O T U podcast. It'll have all the socials you can reach me on. I have been lying to you for the past couple. Well, I think all the episodes initially when you could first started, when I first started using anchor, you could do individual donations. I believe now you can only do, um, subscription monthly donations, same as with Patreon. It's a monthly donation. You can do as little as a dollar a month, 99 cents a month. That is not even a cup of coffee. If you feel so inclined to send me 99 cents a month, I will be forever grateful to you. I enjoy doing this without getting paid for it. I would enjoy it even more if I did get paid for it to get to do something I really love. But either way, thank you for listening. Check out the socials. If you can't do it financially, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Um, YouTube will be where I continue posting everything on just because it is free and it's really been a good spot for me. I've got followers on there. Okay. Please like and follow, like and subscribe on YouTube if you can. It's very helpful. I like it. There's a little bell there that you can click on if you want it to notify you when you get, when I post a new video. I try and do every other week. We're trying to keep it going pretty regularly. Um, but yeah, do that. Um, all the places you can listen to it on stream it on are listed on there. Uh, don't think if you want to get a hold of me, if you have ideas, something you want to hear about, you want to be on the show, get a hold of me. Um, we are working so hard with, <laughs> um, zombie turtle right now to get him on the show. Um, we got it down. We're going to do it. It's going to be a Friday. It's going to be me and Sean Patrick for sure. Maybe Ryan will hop in the mix, but we will get him on the show. I promise. Um, just scheduling, right? Getting the schedule down. But if you have something you want to hear about, let me know. Um, DOTU podcast at gmail.com. Um, but yes, thank you for listening. Those are all the socials. Go to the link tree link. See if there's anything on there you want to do. Um, that's all I got. And thank you for listening. And as always, keep an eye to the sky. And if you see a dog with mange, it might not be a dog with mange. It may just be a chupacabra that wants a pet. I can't tell you to pet it because that would maybe put me in a legality place, but it kind of wants a pet. I will see you all in two weeks. See you then.